You can't make a change that you don't see. Have you ever heard that the worst form of ignorance is that you don't know that you don't know? Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. No matter what I do, I seem to still have this need for female validation. Currently, due to my state in life, I'm unable to date women. Although I'm slowly starting to get past this need, it seems to sporadically burst out in destructive ways. How do I shake this need? How do I go full monk mode for this time in my life? Well, I'll begin like this. Awareness is transformative in and of itself. You've heard me say this before. The fact that you can see something about yourself is paramount. You can't make a change that you don't see. Have you ever heard that the worst form of ignorance is that you don't know that you don't know? And that there's hope when you know that you don't know. And right now, there's hope for you because you know that you don't know. You see, I'm doing this thing. So the resolution of this problem you're having is on its way but here's the thing you have to allow it to resolve itself by merely observing it rather than judging it right so if you have any judgments about yourself if you have any judgments about this seeking of validation and you hate that part of yourself or you uh you just you know you you, you have judgments about it that's gonna, that resistance, like I was talking about in a previous question, is going to keep you stuck in that resistance. So you have to watch yourself like a scientist. And just like a scientist is objective when he's watching his subject, you got to watch yourself. You got to become the object and the subject. <laughs> Does that make sense? You got to be objective about yourself. You got to watch yourself like a scientist watching a, lab, a rat in a lab, a lab rat. You're a lab rat. You got to watch yourself. And just like a scientist who will manipulate variables based on the responses he's getting, you got to do the same thing about yourself. You got to you got to be scientific about removing sin from your life. He says, although I'm slowly starting to get past this need, good. You start you're slowly starting to get past it because you can see it. You can't get past something you don't see. If you walk in in a, in a dark room and there's a coffee table. <laughs> You're going to bump into that because you can't see it. But if you turn on a light, it's, oh, so you could get past it. You get around it. So just be grateful. Put yourself in a state of gratitude that you can see things so you can move around them. But every once in a while, because of the habitual blindness, you bump into something. Boom. I just bumped into something. Right? Now, what does a scientist do if he notices something like that. He notices objectively, oh, well, that was an unexpected or unresourceful re response. I wasn't wanting that response. What does the scientist then do? He changes the variables to help avoid that reaction. Look at the variables in which you sporadically burst out in destructive ways. When did this happen? Hmm. Well, I noticed that it happened after a night where I didn't get enough sleep. Ah, sleep is a variable. I noticed it happened when I was dealing with a woman that reminded me of my ex-girlfriend. Oh, okay, so it's, it has to do with her, that specific woman. I noticed this happened when I drank too much coffee and I'm high strung. Oh, I noticed this happened after a night that I masturbated and watched porn. Oh, do you see? So you start to take notice as to what are, the, what are the triggers that get you to fall into these sinful patterns. It's totally scientific, the whole thing, bro. The whole thing is scientific. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. How do I shake the need? You don't shake it. You just become more and more aware and you adjust variables. You don't have to even work on yourself per se, right? Because when we say work on ourselves, most of the time it's how do I overcome these feelings? Nine times out of 10, it's how do I overcome these feelings? And the feelings are a choice, like I said before. If you're feeling angry about it, you're feeling jealous, uh, um, guilty about it, shameful about it, it's because you're trying to work on it at the level at which it was created, which is all emotional. But if you rise above the emotion altogether, Rise above the emotion altogether. Walk on water, per se. 
without falling into the emotional turmoil. You, with a level head, can start adjusting variables. You know what's one variable when it comes to women? That a lot of men, a lot of men, well, there's a lot of different variables that men are waking up to. One of them is you start to realize that the more you watch porn, the more you uh, uh, masturbate, um, even the more you look and lust after women, the more you fall into these sinful patterns, right? A lot of men are waking up to this. So I, I'm, it's so amazing to see all these men who are like, they're no, you know, the whole no fat movement. I like this kid Hamza. I don't watch too many of his videos, but I see him and I see what he's doing. He had me on as a, as a guest on one of his uh, podcasts. I see what he's doing and he's like teaching, he's younger than me. So he's like, when he's young, he's teaching guys like, what not to do and what to do when it came come to women. And he's like, yo, don't, don't masturbate. Don't watch porn. I'm like, hey, that's good. That's good stuff to say. One thing, though, I was listening to this Catholic book called The Sinner's Guide today. He was talking about lust. And I know Muslims do this. I know Muslims practice this because every time I just, out of my, out of my own sentiment, I've given this advice... But now that I'm diving deep into Catholic theology and I'm, here, I'm reading from all these brilliant old Catholic books and, and masters and saints, they say, turn your eyes away. Turn your eye, don't look at women. Don't look at women. Don't look at them. I know that sounds crazy, but it's about having mastery over your own senses because our senses can lead us astray. One of the best things to have power over the lust, over the, over, over the, the, the falling into lust, is to simply don't look. Like if you have women on your Instagram that cause you to fall into lustful, just thinking about lust, looking at them, you have to delete all those women. Even if it's like, you know, old friends or family members, right? And I'm not saying, you know, you're looking at your family members lustful, but... You get my point. You know, people you know, and you're like, oh, but that's my friend from forever. If she's putting booty pictures up, if she's looking, you know, trying to look sexy and seductive in these pictures, you got to get rid of every single one of those pictures because it's not just that state of being drawn into the picture on the screen, but now that gets your imagination going. And, and, and there's a pleasure in that looking so that when you're at the supermarket and you see this pretty girl, the same way you got, you got hooked into the pleasure of looking at the screen, you're going to see her and you're going to be like, oh. And then the imagination starts going, the emotion starts flowing. Next thing you know, you, you're out of control. So one of the variables is what are you looking at? Are you look, and, and if you find that when I look at women, and you can see them coming. You can see them coming a mile away, a woman that you are going to want to look at. You see her coming, you know that, okay, it's time to practice looking away. And I like that, too, because these women that dress that way, whether they know it or not, they're seeking validation and they get their validation. They get free hits. They're getting free drug hits, free dopamine hits for every man that goes like this, every man that looks right. So I don't like to give them that validation. That's the other thing, too. Right. You say you're trying to get away from seeking female validation, but really you're you're giving them your validation for the most part, right? Even when you sporadically burst, burst out in destructive ways, it's because you've given her your validation. You've validated her by just looking at her. By merely looking at her, you give her your validation. Don't even look. Don't look. There's no reason to look, right? In this same book, he was talking, he told a story about a pie, old pious priest who had a, had a really good woman that worked for him. He was like, she's the best worker, and he really appreciated her. But he would never be alone with her. He would never talk directly to her. He would never get around her. He would always keep her at a distance, not because he was a mean guy, but because he was protecting her and himself from falling into sin of, the sin of lust, because he knew that could happen. He didn't trust himself. Don't trust yourself. Definitely don't trust yourself. That's a part of being scientific. If you trust in yourself, that means you're in the subjective experience and you're like, well, this is how I feel, so it's just the way I'm going to feel. But if you don't trust yourself, you say, wow, there's this feeling in my body, right? Don't even identify with the feeling. Don't say, I feel, right? When you say, I feel, you identify it. We say, there's a feeling. 
And so when you, look, when, you, when you notice, well, there's a feeling, you've immediately objectified it, and that way you can do something about it. But if you say, I feel, that means you have to fall right into it. How do I go full monk mode for this time in my life? Just like the monk, don't look at women. Don't look at them. I keep reiterating that. I know I sound like a broken record because it sounds so, it's so counterculture. It's so weird. But why, then ask yourself this. If, if you're watching this and you're like, Elliot, what are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. Let me ask you this. Why look at them? Why look? When there's no reason to look. Even this pious priest that I'm talking about, when he would work with this woman, and like how Muslims do, he would divert his eyes. There's a great story in the book Iron John, because a lot of it, all of this comes from mommy issues, believe it or not, right? Psychologists know this now, that a lot of our projections onto women come from mommy issues, wanting mommy validation or the effeminacy of wanting to, to revert back into that coddled state sucking on mama's tit. There's a lot of that in men, right? That's why men have to hold ourselves up and we have to draw ourselves forward. Women don't have this same problem where they revert. Men revert into the, into the wanting of mommy, which is dangerous for them because then they project it onto women. Women don't revert into that mommy wanting state in the same way, right? They're, they're, it's a little different for them. Um, but in this, in Iron John, he talks about, uh, he talks about how the Cherokee Indians, he says, the Cherokee Indians, Native Americans, were known, the men were known for their strength, for their valor in war, and with their sexual prowess with women. Apparently, these Cherokee men were very alpha with women, like women just like melted with them and they were just, they knew how to be strong with women. And it wasn't in a, it wasn't in a, um, an effeminate, you know, troubadour way, right? I sing your praises. No, it was more like they were just so manly and they held themselves together so well that women just felt safe around them and can trust them and would yield right into their arms powerful masculine men these Cherokee and so he noticed or he uh, asserted this practice that the Cherokee men would go through when they were young now they would have a rites of passage which most traditional cultures did for young men they would have a rites of passage where the man would be the young man would be stripped away from the mother and the family carried off somewhere with the men and be introduced to his state in life, his purpose in life, meaning for men. That's why men don't have any meaning today. We don't have religion, we don't have initiation, we don't have mythology, we have nothing. We just have, you know, we have Hollywood. <laughs> we have trash, pornography. But they would carry this boy off and the men would introduce him into the world of the men, the fathers, patriarchy. And when he would come back to the society, he would come back to the tribe, he no longer spoke or looked directly at his mother. There was some wisdom to this. He would only relate to his mother through his siblings or through you know, a different family member. And the mother understood this. The mother understood that from now on, her relationship to her, to her son I say, almost said husband because a lot of son husbands is why we have so many effeminate men today because they're in love with their mommies whether they know it or not. It's incestuous. They have these incestuous relationships with their mothers. But these men and these mothers understood that there needs to be a clean break with the mother. And so the mothers played along with it too. These weren't suppressed women, right? They weren't feminists that were, would rally against it. They were women that wanted strong men in their families. They wanted strong sons, <laughs> right? To protect the tribe. And so the woman played along with it too. And so she would relay back to someone else to give information to her son. What that did was it, it gave him proper perspective with, in regard to the sensual gratification that comes from women. Because he knows that he no longer can fall into that suckling mommy state from his mother. So he holds himself as a real man. Thus, when he's around women, he doesn't need suckling from them. This is what most of us need. Most of our valid, seeking validation from women 
is, uh, is a need for suckling. Oh, oh, she's going to make me feel good. Oh, she's so cuddly and warm and sweet and soft and gushy and oh, right? And especially if you've been busting your nut to uh, pornography, you know that good, that good hit, that good hit feeling. So when you see a woman, you think, oh, I'm going to get a hit from her. All that goes away. All that goes away when you have a rightly ordered perspective on women that begins with the mother. So... Once again, I'm going in a thousand different directions here with this <laughs> question. So going full monk mode, uh, it, 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 would, it would require behaving like a monk. And you know what monks do? They live in monasteries. And you know who aren't in monasteries with monks? Women. They're just not around them. Just don't be around them. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s. If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, how millions of men are fighting back and winning the war against masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.